Okay. Hey, welcome everyone. So glad you could join us for uh, the April version of our series on candidate recruitment, employee experience, and all things employment brand. Uh, I know there are some familiar faces in the crowd today, so welcome. And, and those of you that are, are new to our sessions, welcome. So we're going to talk today about why today's top talent expects a curated candidate experience. And not only are we gonna tell you why they expect it, we're gonna tell you what a candidate experience really means. You see, how we recruit today is so vastly different from what we were doing three, four, or five years ago, and certainly a lot different than pre-pandemic and 10 years ago. And people are expecting more out of the application process and they're, they're working through from even before they send the application up until the time of hire. They're expecting things from us. And that's what we're going to address today. What can we do to get people on our fishing hook and reel them into the boat? Because honestly, what it comes down to is the, the world of recruiting has changed. And if we want to become an employer of choice or a workplace of choice, um, or a best place to work, whatever you want to call it, then what we really have to do is tailor our candidate journey. And we're going to talk to you a little bit about the candidate journey today, but we're going to take an even deeper dive into that. Um, I believe in two months, Paul, I think is our, is our, our we're going to call it the, the recruiting funnel, if it, if it were. Um, but there is a journey here whether it's a journey of a couple days because you, you know, apply one day, interview them the next, they hire on the next kind of thing, or maybe you've got a, a little bit longer period of time because of the vetting you need to do and things. It's a journey for these folks. And we've got to hold their hands during the journey. And we're going to talk about why, again, that is so, so important for us to do today. So you are in the right place if your recruiting efforts aren't generating the top talent yet. I do a lot of speaking at conferences, and, and every time I'm on stage, I ask for a show of hands at this point, like, how many of you are hiring? Of course, every hand goes up. And I say, okay, keep your hands up if you can't find the right talent, and 90% of the hands stay up, right? Th this is hard today. It's hard, it's, it's hard to find people. It's even harder to find top talent. And so we're going to talk about how top talent is attracted to us if we tailor their candidate journey properly. If you're struggling to fill frontline positions, you know, let's forget about even top talent. If you can't fill the frontline positions, we're going to talk about that today. We have the, the formula, if you will, for how to communicate not only about the positions that you have, but about your place of business and what separates it from all of your competition. And when we talk about your competition today, I don't want you to simply think competition in terms of your industry, but it's who you're competing for people with. And that could be very different, right? I mean, your frontline positions, you might be competing with a different set of folks than your top talent positions or your executive positions. So keep your mind open when we talk about competitors, about who it is you're really competing for talent with. And finally, if you just want to be known as a great place to work, it's more about doing the surveys and the questionnaires that we see and the best places to work things. There's got to be a lot going on in your place to get real talent in there and talking about you. And that's the key. We've got to get them talking about us. And later in the, the seminar today, Paul's going to going to share some great real life examples of some companies that are doing what we're talking about perfectly. So here's what we're going to cover today. We're going to talk about the candidate experience and how it impacts your recruiting efforts, both for good and bad. We're going to talk about three ways to improve your candidate experience. If you've shared time with, with Paul and I in the past, you know we are all about delivering value in these sessions, and we're all about giving you takeaways. So we're going to guarantee at minimum three ways you can improve your candidate experience. And then finally, we're going to take a deep dive into two companies 
that are knocking it out of the park when it comes to how they handle their candidate experience. And what we pick these two companies, not just because they're doing it well, but they're going to give you two different looks, kind of a techie sort of company where, you know, people can work remote and then more of a frontline retail blue collar type of, of environment. Just so that you can see that what we're talking about, it works in both scenarios. So who am I? Uh, some of you know me, some of you don't. My name is Ed Crow. I am the talent transformation expert for organizations that are seeking eight figure growth. I love talking about all things people strategy, and that goes from how we recruit and train all the way up to how we coach our leaders to be better leaders for us. And that's why I love working with Paul on these webinars, because it just hits, it hits one of my sweet spots for me. Uh, Paul, why don't you, you share a little bit about yourself? Thanks, Ed. Uh, so I am a brand storyteller and a ghostwriter. And the way Ed and I connected was through a, a webinar like this. And he asked me to help him out with some of his storytelling and the messages he was putting out. And then after us working together, he thought, wow, there's a, a lot of need for this with leaders that need to evangelize the story of their company, of their leadership and to their workforce. So mm -hmm. we've been working together since about 20, so since 2020 now yeah, on yeah, uh, pandemic, yeah. <laughs> creating these employment brand stories that help companies get their message out about why they're great places to work. So that's how we've been working together. Yeah, thanks. So you're going to be hearing more from, from Paul later on. So let's hop right in. So what is the candidate experience? So Paul and I define this as anything that you're doing that impacts and potentially influences someone to say, huh, should I check this company out? That's the point at which someone truly becomes a candidate. So we don't always know where, where and when that is. It could be a customer walking into your store. Could be um, someone who sees an ad for your services. It could be someone who sees you on a job board, right? So that kind of experience starts even before the person hits send to send you their resume. And it's critical to understand that because people today are not going to click send to send you their resume before they do some things. You know, we cyber stalk people all the time, right? You can admit it that you cyber stalk people. Well, you know what? Candidates are cyber stalking us as well. They're checking us out. They want to figure out whether they even want to work with us before they submit their application. You know, in the old days, you know, of, of the dinosaurs and newspapers, what'd you have to do? You look through the newspaper, you saw the job ads, you printed out your or typed up your resume, you stuck it in the envelope. I mean, you had to do all of these things. And maybe you didn't know much about the company except what you read in that little job post. But now people can find almost anything out about us that they want. And they dig and they do find it out. And so part of what you're going to hear Paul and I talk about today is messaging and being on point with the messaging. And in fact, one of the companies we picked is so on point with their messaging. It's why we picked them. Um, and I can't wait for, for Paul to share that story with you. So here's what I want you to think about. So all of your organizations, I'm sure, have a customer experience that you strive for. And why do you do that? Because here's one stat, you know, People that are online who believe a company's trustworthy are three times more likely to forgive you if you mess up, right? Because you have built some trustworthiness up in, and some credit, if you will, in their mind. We're seeing the same trends with candidates. If they feel that it's a company that they can trust and want to work for, they're more willing to forgive some of the mistakes along the way. So building our online presence as a trustworthy organization is critical from a candidate experience standpoint, as well as our customer experience standpoint. Now, here's something that we've been seeing in the last couple of years that a lot of companies get gun shy on. Should we take a stand on an issue? 
whatever that issue might be, social, environmental, political, whatever, almost half of American adults say, you know what, we would favor a company that does take a stand and, and says, yes, we believe in this or we don't believe in that kind of thing. So again, it's a 50-50 shot, but it's something that we have to think about in terms of our desire to attract people to us who share in our values. If we don't put our values out there, people won't know what they are and they won't know if they've got a match. So there are a lot of landmines in taking a stand on these kinds of issues, absolutely. But there can be a lot of benefit too. And finally, if we don't provide a good experience for our customers, we know what happens. 68% go to a competitor if they have a negative experience with us. Candidates are the same way. Candidates are not waiting around anymore. They submit their resume. They want almost immediate confirmation that the resume has been received and it's getting reviewed. And they certainly don't want to wait a week to find out if they're going to get an interview. So everything has to be expeditious. And again, I'll liken it to customer um, satisfaction. You know, if you mess up with a customer and you don't get into service recovery mode quickly, 68% of the time, you're going to lose that customer. Because not only did we mess up, we failed to take action to fix the error. Candidates are viewing things the same way. So even though these stats were taken in a customer service sort of environment, we're seeing the same trends that we as customers take part in. We as job candidates are also taking part in. So here's what candidates expect. First off, as I mentioned, they're going to stalk us, okay? <laughs> they are going to look us up. And so the question is, what are they going to find when they look us up? Now, you might say, oh, well, Ed, our website is, is you know, it's a great marker for us. It's got all the whiz-bang videos. It's got this. It's got great. Where else? And I'll open the chat room up, and Paul's going to monitor that. Where else could a candidate get information about your company? that is not your company website. A Google from Lance. Okay, sure. And, and anything's gonna pop on Google, right? Oh yeah. Lance, anything specific you were thinking about with Google? Uh, Google reviews. Ah, Google reviews specifically. I like that one for sure. We got anything else in there, Paul? We have... Uh... My current and former employees, word of mouth from yep. uh, Krista. We've got okay. IBC website from Kendra. Okay. And we have word of mouth from known employees yeah. from Larry. Yeah, so, so word of mouth, absolutely. And one of the ways that people uh, get word of mouth is a website called glassdoor.com. If you don't know what's going on on glassdoor.com, get out there. Type it in. Don't do it now. You got important stuff to listen to, but get out there and, and take a look at, at glassdoor.com and just type in your company name. You're going to see some stuff you probably don't like in there. And it's easy to say, oh, well, those are disgruntled people or we fired that person. No wonder they're mouthing off. Well, OK, let's take it with a grain of salt. But I want you to think about the fact that if you go out to eat, do you get on Yelp or TripAdvisor? and look at a restaurant's reviews, right? Most of us do, especially if we're out of town. And so we're gonna look down through and see, oh, wait, you know, maybe there's one person who's dissatisfied, but 20 positive reviews make up for that. But what if there's 10 negative and 10 positive? Are you gonna go to that restaurant? We've got the same challenge with things like Google Review and uh, Glassdoor.com among others. How much positives out there compared to the negative? We can't always control the negative, but we can control the positive. Okay, what else are they going to do? What else do they expect, I should say? They want real-time updates. You know, how, how, how often does your website not get a total makeover or refresh, but post new stuff? How about your social media feeds? Does your organization have uh, a YouTube channel? Do they have a LinkedIn company page? Do you have a blog? Whatever it might be. 
how often are those things updated? If you just participated in a charity event, are there pictures? Hey, you know, here was this parade and we sponsored a float. Oh, hey, the local pet shelter had a fundraiser and our people were there, right? Those kinds of things creates that social credibility for you. And people want to see that your stuff is refreshed, that you're up to date. It's not just about the fact that you're doing those things. It's about the fact that you're keeping up your appearances online. If you've changed your logo recently, everywhere we should see the new logo. We shouldn't see any of the old logo anymore, that kind of thing. And finally, overall, if I'm a candidate, what is the digital experience like for getting information about your company for me to make a decision? Is everything there or is it hard to find? We're going to talk in a little bit about barriers that we create sometimes when it comes to people applying for work with us. We know that people are applying online in droves. What oftentimes we don't realize is how often they're using their mobile device. They're not sitting at their laptop or a desktop. So how convenient is it for me to get on with my phone and actually access your website, see what I need to see, enter the information I need to enter? If we're doing things that are not mobile friendly, we're missing out. And especially the younger generations are going to blow right past us. They're not going to have time for things that take forever to load or don't load or they, it downloads a PDF document instead of a fillable document or an online link. And I'll be honest, I mean, I'm not a younger generation. When I'm out looking at opportunities for speaking and I pull down a speaker page and it's a PDF that I can't fill in, um, I've got to either print it out or convert it over in order to email. Like I just don't. It takes too much time. I don't do it. And sometimes we get the attitude that, well, those people are lazy. Well, we've put a barrier up. We need to make things easier for folks. And that's part of our digital experience. So here's the thing with the candidate experience. It really has to have three traits. The very first trait is that your candidate experience needs to be concise. In other words, how quickly can I get information? about your position. Paul, do you remember the title that one of your customers wanted to work with that one time that was just so obscure? Uh, I think it was, I mean, they should have just said, um, what was it, a director of something? I can't I Like can't director remember. of customer service or something. Once you get people in. But the people outside your company don't understand your language and you can't you can't expect them to apply if they don't know what the position is. Yeah. But people it was are something doing like guru of relationships, efficacy and profitability. I mean, OK, that sounds good. Who is searching that as a job title? Nobody. <laughs> OK. And so our job titles, I don't care what they are internal when we're posting things or talking about things about our company to the external world, we'd be concise. We need to say, yeah, it's a director of customer service, a bank manager, a branch manager. It's a, a retail supervisor. It's, you know, fill in the blank, right? Things that 90% of the population are going to say, oh yeah, I know what that is. I get an idea of what that person would do, okay? And in fact, we found some, some data that says job titles that are between one and three words have double the apply rate of some of these job titles that go on for 12 plus words. Yes, they're out there. Where it'll say director dash, da 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 and it just rattles off all this stuff. And people don't apply to that. They don't know what it means. So we want to keep things concise in our communications. The second thing, and I alluded to this in my opening remarks, is that the CAT experience has to be consistent. In other words, if I get on your website, I'm seeing a theme. I'm seeing um, maybe a motto, a mantra, if it were. Now I get on your social media sites. I'm seeing the same theme, the same mantra, the same wording. Uh, I see posts on YouTube at 
the again the animal shelter and you're you're volunteering there right and it's the same right people are looking for that consistency because it reinforces that you are who you say you are and that what you say you believe in you do believe in because they're seeing it on multiple fronts and the final piece is has to be engaging so we are definitely in the gamer type of mentality, right? People want to be engaged in what's going on online. And one of the, the freebies we're going to give later on is a way to think about how you advertise and write job posts. And this is one of the things that's one of Paul's magic tricks, I like to call it, is how he's able to really rewrite job posts so that they're really engaging. Think about your average job post. Doesn't it say something like, um, Director of customer service. This person will be responsible for handling customer complaints, driving our customer experience uh, in our retail locations, and maintaining high levels of customer satisfaction. You know, I read that and I want to go, well, of course that's what they're going to do. Like we know this because that's the director of customer service. Okay. But what people really want to know is why should I apply for this? And we have, um, again, a freebie at the end we're going to offer you that shows you how to write things in a way that answers people's questions. So instead of a list of job duties, I might say something like, okay, director of customer service, do you like handling people that are not always in a good mood? Do you like solving problems and, and using your wits um, in the spur of the moment? Then this job's for you. This job requires you to think on your feet and be tactful in handling a variety of situations. If this sounds like you, we need to talk. Does that sound different than just a list of job duties, right? Because now if I'm that person reading that and I'm going, yeah, I like to do those things. Now you're speaking my language. Now I know what's in it for me. That's the whiff them there. In case you guys didn't know, whiff them. What's in it for me, okay? That's what the candidates need to know. Not, oh, we've got a great salary and benefits. Yep, you and everybody else, right? Hey, we give vacation time. Yep, you and everybody else. They need to know what their 40-hour work week is going to be like. What, what's the kind of things they're going to be doing that's going to get their juices from? That's what an engaging job description and job post is all about. It creates that hunger in the candidate to say, yeah, they're speaking to me. They're talking to me. I got an in for this job. So here's some things that candidates expect, okay? They just don't, they don't want to know what job they're going to be doing, okay? Again, if I've been a customer service director for five or 10 years, I know the job. So what is it that I really want to know? Throw it in the chat. What is it that I really want to know about your director of customer service job to get me to apply? We've got has a passion for helping customers resolve issues from Lance. Kendra okay. says, want to know about the culture or work environment. Bang on there. Yep. Yep. I don't disagree with those things. Features tell, benefits sell. Larry Martin. That's <laughs> features tell, benefits sell. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Here's that's the actually thing. one of our uh <laughs> our friends uh what is it uh Majid always says uh, words tell or stories sell. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yep. So here's the thing, in, in, in our world. Oh, you got one more, okay. Yeah, Gabby says, they also want to know about career progression. Ah, yes, absolutely. And you think about, I'll comment on that before I give you some secret sauce here. You know, when the millennials first hit the workforce 20 years ago, um, everyone was up in arms because they were asking about, well, you know, how do I move up in this company? How do I... Um, how do I advance? How do I this? How, and we would say, yo, time out, time out. Just relax, kid. Do your job and we'll worry about the rest later. But I looked at that and I said, you know, this is a good thing. They're already envisioning a future with us. Why did we want to stifle that? I don't understand. So yes, absolutely. When someone comes in and says, hey, how do I advance in this place? We should be ready and willing to have that discussion with them. So our secret sauce is, they don't just want to know what job they're going to be doing. 
They want to know what it's going to be like doing that job for you. That's the sell point there, right? So Larry says that, that benefits sell. What are the benefits of doing the job for you? And again, I'm not talking about pay and medical benefits, right? Everybody's got that stuff today. And we know pay is going through the roof. Everybody's paying an extra, you know, buck an hour to people, okay? What is it that my nine to five with you is going to be like? That's what people really want to know. Am I going to fit in with you? And so when we think about improving our candidate experience, Paul's now going to take you through a couple of examples. And I want you to think about in your organizations, what's it like to apply for work with you, to go through the, the interview process, all the application, everything compared to the things that, that Paul's going to share with you, kind of be evaluating what's going on. So, Paul, take it away. Thanks, Ed. So I'm excited to share this with you because I, I did some deep diving into a few websites over the weekend, and I've done work with some companies with Ed at evaluating their candidate experience. And we found some really great examples that, that showcase every step of the candidate experience. So when you see this, I want you to look at how, how they've done it and think about how your, um, your online presence, your um, materials on the website, on the careers page, how they kind of measure up, or if there is somebody else out there that you want to kind of model. So the first step in, in actually improving your candidate experience is to evaluate your online presence. So what does that mean? Well, basically it's about anywhere that somebody can come across you online. So like Lance said, like they can Google your company and everything's going to come up. And then you'll see the posts that are that are being um, put out on on Facebook. You'll see the page, the different pages your company has. So people will have everything at a glance, and they'll start digging in. So that's what they're doing. Therefore, you should do that too, and see what you can do to improve that. So we're talking like your LinkedIn, your Facebook pages, your Instagram. And I don't, you know, I don't know what you can put out on TikTok, but uh, that as well, because that's where people are going. And just making sure that it all shows you in a good light. And then when they are looking at that, it looks like what you see on your careers page as well. There has to be that uniformity, the consistent, consistency that Ed was talking about. And then the second thing to improve your candidate experience is to cut out processes that turn candidates away. And the the best example that uh, that Ed shared about this is just if if I put if I upload my resume to your careers page, do I then have to go through and fill in my name, address, phone number, date of birth, and everything all over again when you already have that information? That's one thing. It's it's redundant and annoying mm -hmm. and starts to give people a thought like, wow, if they do this, if they're already doing this to me, how much am I going to have to go th jump through hoops and uh, bureaucracy and stuff when I'm working there? So you're actually, when you're providing a candidate experience, you're providing a taste of what it's like to work in your office, or that's what they think it is. And they, they assume that if this experience is bad, then I can only imagine what being there for a few months is going to feel like. So you want to make sure that you've made it easy. And if people are applying online and I can't, did, was there a percentage for how many people applied to, to jobs online? I think it was like 60% now. Yeah, it's, it's pretty high. Yep. Yeah. So the whole process is happening through a smartphone. You want to make sure that that works and it's not, it's not clunky and it's not hard to do because people will drop it. They will drop out of the process and you are going to lose out on good people. Yeah, we, we've heard that... what, Paul? Um, there are some some cases where it takes people 52, that's five, two clicks to get through a job application process. Are you clicking 52 times on anything, <laughs> right? People bag out of that and say, look, I'm, I'm done. Um, it's like the, and I'm going to date myself here maybe, but it's, it's the old, um, how many licks does it take to get through the Tootsie Pop? We don't know because it takes forever, right? It's the same thing. You start clicking too often. People are just going to say, eh, I'm done with, it. I'm just going <laughs> to 
you know, I'm going to leave. They're not going to bite into the Tootsie Pop. They're just leaving. Yeah. Yeah. So, and you, you want to make that process uh, easy and you want them to know <laughs> that when they get through that process, what's going to happen next. Mm -hmm. And then the third thing is the candidate experience really is about showing people what your culture's like. So you need to showcase your culture every step of the way. And if you think about it, like from a customer point of view, like we're always, we're always being kind of wooed as customers right there. Uh, the companies are, are trying to show us how good it is here and how, how much you're going to like it coming into our store or working with our business. And they want to show that the grass is greener. If you're with them, you have to do the same thing and it has to be true. Like you, you can't just make things up about how, how your culture is. You need to find out what's really good about your culture and what the people that you have working with you enjoy and like. And if you're, if you're not sure, you better be asking. And if people are disgruntled and not happy, you better be looking at fixing that because that's going to hurt you if, it, and it already is. So this is a really important thing is people have to like working for you. And that is a big factor in companies that are top talent magnets. So those are the three things that you want to actually focus on is your online presence and then uh, making sure that the process of applying and interacting with you is, is not clunky. And then three, being able to get an insight into what your company's like on the inside, showing the culture and that people are really happy there. So I'll show you a couple of case studies. And I wanted to make sure that we covered both ends of the spectrum. Like, uh, we can't just cover like the nice office uh, type of jobs where people are all sort of clean and at desks and can work from home and are doing tech type of work. We wanted to show that, you know, this actually does work in frontline positions in service, um, service type of jobs and that you can actually find people that want to work. It just takes, it takes a different point of view. And we've run into this, haven't we Ed? Like people are like, yeah, yeah but this isn't going to work for like, nobody wants to work and people just like don't want jobs anymore. It's like, well, they do still need to put food on the table. Right. So, mm -hmm. yeah. so we went all the way to um, service level job, like gas stations and restaurants. And Ed, you, uh, you know, this company, just give us a little background on it. Yeah. So, um, Sheets is, uh, you'll find them up and down the East Coast these days, but they started in central Pennsylvania, kind of midway between, almost really mid-state between Philly and Pittsburgh, honestly, and um, they, they're in a town called Altoona, and they have just grown massively in the last 20 years. I mean, just pushing out some of the, the more local and regional uh, convenience stores, because you can see by this picture, this is a very typical look. For a sheets a new sheet so you got a very well lit fueling area and then just take a look at the storefront there i mean it looks inviting it doesn't look like a convenience store it has almost a bistro kind of feel to it and so you can go here you get your gas yeah you can get your convenience store stuff they have quite a robust made to order uh deli that's actually quite good um you know i would not consider it gas station food at all uh, fresh made sandwiches, that kind of thing. And um, their prices, you know, you see one of their themes, you know, high, high quality gas at the lowest possible price. And so they, they have really built a brand for themselves and they play off of the, the Z in their name. So we talked about everything kind of following a theme. Almost everywhere you see a plural, it's a Z instead of an S. Um, and they they play off of the SH on some things, too. So um, like they call their muffins schmuffins. Um, it's just it's just part of their shtick. Right. But it's a theme and it's upbeat and it's vibrant. So, yeah, Paul, take it away. All right. So uh, let's dive in. So in terms of online presence, like I said, Google yourself and go to your pages and see what they what they show and what you'll see is the, the LinkedIn page, it's branded with sheets and you can see that they are hiring, right? There's uh, there's jobs to check out. And so someone coming across your, your LinkedIn profile knows, hey, let's, let's go dig a little further. So it might've just been somebody that was in 
um, buying a muffin or stopping to get gas and they think, hey, like that employee was really nice and they seem really happy and I've never actually experienced such an upbeat gas station, maybe this is the right place for me. And honestly, as you dig further, you'd be like, it may be the right place for a lot of people. And so then we'll go to Facebook. And again, you see um, they're, uh, they're talking about making career growth happen, just as, uh, as we talked about in the discussion, right? You can see that, oh, it's a gas station, but did you ever think of career opportunities at a gas station and places to grow and a career path? And there really is one and they're showcasing it. Take a look too. You, you can just see at the bottom of, of Paul's screen capture here that on the day he captured it, they said, hey, got a favorite work perk? Drop it in the comments. What's that doing for them? You guys could, can unmute and, and share if you want. What, what, is, what are they gathering there? Asking what customers or even you know, potential employees. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what's going on that's hot for people? And they're, they're getting free market data here, right? Someone says, oh, yeah, I got pet insurance in my place. And they see that enough. Oh, gosh, maybe we should offer pet insurance, right? I mean, you, it doesn't take a lot for us to do these things. But that that when, when Paul sent this to me, I was like, oh, that's cool. We got We got to talk about that for a moment. Oh, good eye for that one. Um, and certainly yeah, when you're getting um, when you're getting feedback like that, you know, for free, like you you're doing your market research right online. Mm -hmm. okay, and then we look at Instagram and definitely um, you can see the, uh, you know, you can see how the employees are, are interacting on site and they, I, I don't know their policy for posting, but you need to, you need to look at what your policy is for your employees sharing on social and you want to get them doing it and having fun. Because one of the aspects of the candidate experience is it needs to be engaging. So you need engagement from the candidate side. You need engagement from the employee side. And that's just the nature of our world today. It's a social media world. And social media is all about engagement. And then Glassdoor, we talked about this one, right? Uh, Ed was saying, like, if, you don't, if you're if you not looking for all your ex-employees bad-mouthing you on Glassdoor, you better <laughs> check out what's being said because there might be some damage control to do and some uh, uh, reputation management. And so we, uh, we're we working with a, an organization that uh, they're, they're looking at this and trying to increase their score. So what's their, uh, their rating here? Is it on there? Um, overall 3.7 so the 3.7 is 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 decent um you know it's uh i've seen it go the next the next company we look at is a four but um 3.7 is decent and you can do things to bump it up and one big factor is getting the current employees to actually post and so really good things to do are get them sharing about the things that they like you know, kind of prime the pump you know Tell them to talk about the, share about the uh, the best features of the job and what um, what they think is great about the company. And when they're in a positive mindset, go, wow, you know, can we get you to share that on Glassdoor? And I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of different things you can promote internally to get your Glassdoor reviews up, um, have promotions and contests and things to get people inspired to do so you can't of course go check on them and see what they did because it's anonymous and uh it has to be that way so that it's uh, actually a uh, you know a, a what do you call it transparent process but if you encourage it it will happen and you'll see the numbers go up as we've seen with our with our clients so make sure you're managing that and then look at all the data these guys got here i mean all of these are clickable links here you know you can look at the reviews and then you can specifically look at stuff related to jobs and salaries and interviews and all these other things. So um, it's it's really kind of, you know, most people like just kind of dismiss it because eh, it's just disgruntled people out there. Not always. I mean, Paul will show you, I think it's on the, is it with the next case study where, you know, someone says, hey, well, this part of the company, it's really not that great, but over here, it's really good. You know, so you get a well-balanced look in many cases. Yeah, and the, another thing that, 
um, we've seen is some people put the glass door rating right on their careers page and they'll mm -hmm. have links to it. Yeah. This will be yeah. transparent. They're proud of it. Yeah. And then this is the actual careers page. And I think to, uh, to get here, I had to click jobs with a Z and got right <laughs> to this page. And then what you'll see is as soon as you land here, you, you see that start here, drop down menu, and it starts right with clear uh, career path, employee promise, events, hiring process, and locations. So they're making it easy for you to see how to get engaged here. And then right below, you can see the search our jobs, and you'll see a robust sort of listing of how you can search for the jobs by location, by type, if you're looking for entry level management, and even tech jobs. And mm -hmm. it's easy and searchable. And then you see our friend in the corner doing... Um, doing a little video of the perks that he experiences. So you've got it right, like you've got social proof right out of the employee's mouth. Mm -hmm. And yeah, that's just when you it, arrive. It's not a professionally shot video, right? I mean, it doesn't have to be fancy, these things. They just have to be be real and relevant. Yeah, it's kind of TikTok-like. Yeah. And then as far as the user experience goes, it's really easy to navigate through this website and you don't have to go to a different careers site to to get to these these listings and i i mean i know there's there's also ways of managing if you have a third party hosting your your job postings but they do it right on their site so again you can apply right from the job posting and this is neat just when as soon as you get to checking out the the job site you'll first you see like this is a store team member and the average salary is 49,000. And if you click those bars on the side, so you see that, that I mean, that's, uh, it's not clickable right now, but you can actually see the salaries for the, the different levels. And so you can see there's a clear career path there. Uh, if you are motivated, you can climb the ranks. Mm -hmm. And I think this is an important part is just being really open about your your process and in a lot of cases a lot of thought does not go into the hiring process it's kind of a uh oh we're in a crisis and we need to hire somebody yesterday and so everyone in hr is scrambling to get this done and then you don't have the collaboration of the team and there's no real thought out process for how the onboarding or the interviewing and onboarding happens so if you can tell people what to expect then they feel like, oh, okay, these people have it together. And I know that I'm going to do hear back after I submit this. It's not going into the void and we won't know, you know, if anybody got it or read it or cares or if there's anyone on the other <laughs> side. So that's, that's a big one. Yeah. And, and I would say, you know, and if you notice here, they even say how many days, like, okay, you're going to hear right away as soon as we get your application. But, you know, take a look within three or five days, you're going to hear. Now, personally, I think if you're talking frontline jobs, that's too long. And I would be surprised if they're waiting that long to contact frontline people. But, um, you know, I'd like to see them move a little faster. But the fact is they have it out here saying this is our process and this is what happens with it. And it's important for people to know that. Yeah. And I know that, uh, yeah, some of our uh, some of our clients are aiming for that 24 hour mark or even 24 yep. to 48 hours to, to get right back by phone or text. Just like, Hey, yep. you know what? Uh, we got a live one here and we want to get on it. We keep it moving. Yeah. Yeah. So then they're helpful, right? The, the user experience, like I apply for a job and maybe you're, maybe you're nervous and you don't know what to do. Well here, like perfect your resume. There's, there's resources for how to understand the role just best practices like being on time and dress code. And, you know, we we were trained, right? We're in a generation where we have a, a way of showing up to job interviews. Nowadays, it's kind of very interesting what's in people's heads. So uh, it's good to provide that insight of what you want to see and help them to succeed. Yeah. And another video in the corner here. Yeah. So, you know, you're seeing there's almost a video on every screenshot that Paul's captured. And it's a different video pertaining to the, the topic of that page. And then they're showcasing their culture. And again, it's done all by video. You can, I mean, the, 
they do a very good job of sharing their culture. And I think even just by what we've seen so far, you can see that, you know, there, there's an upbeat nature to this place and that the people, the people are having fun and, and granted, you know, like there's people that there's always people that aren't going to have fun, but uh, most of the people here are sharing something that they, they really like. And then what you can sort it by company culture, perks and benefits, a day in the life and career path. So they really have, asked their employees to share about all aspects of the culture and the job and they're doing their best to give a real life look into a, a day in the life on the work uh, the workforce here now this is really good because you know in a lot of cases companies have their um, they have their values posted and in a lot of cases most people in the company can't remember what the values are but here they've got five pillars of our promise and this is their promise to their employees and the culture here and i i would have liked to share all of them with you just because they're really good but i didn't uh didn't for the sake of time but here you see they have a high energy hustle so the people that come on board yeah they know okay i'm gonna get paid well but i gotta hustle it i gotta work here right and they are into culture and atmosphere and there's uh, electric atmosphere and people give 110%, but they're going to have fun and you'll get paid pretty well. And I think that says a lot more than just, you know, we're, uh, we work hard. It's, uh, it's like, there's a give and take. And then this video here, it's, um, it's just showing like for about a minute and a half, two minutes, what it looks like to, to work all throughout sheets, you know, whether you're driving a truck, whether you're in a warehouse, whether you're in a restaurant, uh, whether you're doing tech, it's, it's just showing the activities that employees are involved in. And so it's a good idea to put, put one of these together. And that's the professional side of things, but you'll see all the way through the site. And probably, you know, what holds more cred is that guy in the corner again, that's just talking about what, you know, what's it like to, um, to try and move up in sheets. And it's right out of the horse's mouth, and you just see regular people, right? They're not uh, they're not actors or models or anything. It's just a guy in his job. Before we really, you know, before we before we get into that, yeah. Paul, um, any ahas from the group here, like something you saw that you went, "Whoa, that's really cool." That Sheets is doing. Come on, well, give me an well, aha. It, the the fact that they. Uh... They want to help you with those five areas of, uh, of, of helping you. Like the example I saw was uh, how, how to do a good resume, how to handle the questions on, on an interview, what type of questions, you know, that is showing you know, they're, they're kind of empathetic towards the employee. Yeah, I can help you fill out your, your resume, but they're going to ask you this question. And it, that's important that you know how to say it like this or whatever. But I think that's important. That's pretty cool. Yeah. Thanks, Larry. Yeah, that's great. Anything else? Anyone else have anything jump I mean, out? They're kind of setting their expectation for that. So, you know, this is what we're looking for. And are you that, are you that person, you know, that can kind of come through with those, right? So, and then preparing them for that process too, because there's always one thing that, that gets me with that is as far as a, you know, being in banking for so many years that even we have on our IBC, you know, talking about being a high performance company. Well, what does that mean to the I always wonder what does that mean to the candidate? What is their perception of that? Because it can be so many things, right? So that's that's one thing that I always think of with that, like, mm. but this is a good breakdown on that. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah, I agree. That I know. Um, I know that the uh, like you know the we do more or you know we we work hard here. It's like yeah, do you, like we'll pay you, but uh, we expect you to give us your soul or what have you. No, like uh, you can see. <laughs> Like people, people like it here and they can move up and there's a lot to, there's a lot to offer. It's a give and take. And so this is the second case study and it's HubSpot. And I, I love, I love going back to this company because it was a sort of, they, they do it well. And they're, you know, they're a tech company and they're in CRM and uh, inbound marketing. And so everybody there can pretty much work from home or in an office and there is, it's not dirty or grungy. So we made sure that we wanted to show both. And HubSpot does a nice job of showing what it's like on the workforce and 
they have a good score on online. So let's uh, let's just get into it. So yeah. their online presence, you've got their right on their careers page. They show their profile on um, Instagram, so you can see what HubSpot life is like, and people just at work and what they're doing in the community and how people are working from home. So it's really interesting to to get that that peak and it's it's real live posts from the employees. And then the presence online, I, I they have all their pages and we already saw their Instagram. But if you go to the glass door, it's interesting, right? You have a current employee saying that they have a great work culture and he's a software engineer. So he says, genuinely empathetic and talented people in the growth product group. Engineering leadership is top notch. Cons, he doesn't have any, but he says it's not rainbows and unicorns. It's a business. And at the end of the day, you got to create more value than you're paid. So it's the truth, right? But he's he's happy there and he's currently employed. And that's that's what we want to encourage. Get some people to to say things, uh, people from that are currently employed to go post on on HubSpot. And I know talking to some clients, they're like, eh, you know what? Like, we don't want them going over there and seeing that other people are paid more than us or whatever. And it's like, well, they're checking already. So just like encourage them. And then the user experience. Again, they just uh, just like you were saying, Larry, this uh, this site also shows has a wealth of resources to show the candidates that we're going to help you. We we're here to help you succeed. So, you know, right from the get go, they want you to know that they're recruiters. They're working with you. They're not trying to select you out. And it's it's a real change of mindset, isn't it, from how we used to be in recruiting in terms of you know, show up and show me why I should hire you, you know, what you got, like, I, we now know that we don't hold all the cards anymore. So we have to treat people well and help them to succeed. And then, again, you see the the progression, and they, they give all the steps. So, you know, the, after you apply, you're going to have, um, a recruiting team member is going to review your application and follow up within 10 days. Okay, so it's a longer time period. Yeah. But they talk about the fact, and that's not not a surprise, right, Paul? I mean, it's a, it's a more, it's a techie job. Um, so the vetting is going to be a little deeper. Uh, but it's neat here because you can see the progression after the application. I'm getting a phone interview. After that, there's an assessment. And then, you know, if, if we were able to click here, you'd see the other steps involved. Yeah, and they'll let you know if there's um, if there are any sort of testing tests or projects that you'll have to engage in to show your capabilities. Yep. And then again, they've got preparing for the interviews, and um, so you see that the on the left hand side there's a coding assessment if you are applying for a job like that. They've got tips for nailing your interviews, and then what's it really like starting a job here or a remote job? So some of their people that are looking for this kind of employment, HubSpot's going to be a great place for them. And that's how people search, right? They, they're looking for remote opportunities. Now, one thing I really love about HubSpot is their culture code. And these culture decks, they're something that's that's really good to do. You know, it's uh, it's something that tells the story. And this is something I love doing is listening to people, finding out what's the story you're actually telling and how are you sharing it? How can you get it across? And what HubSpot has done is, it is 128 slides, but it's it's a picture story, really. And I'm not going to show it to you, but if you want to look at it, it's right on their HubSpot careers page. And they talk about what their values are and what it means to live those values in the culture at HubSpot. So it shows a great example of what it'll be like to, to work there. And it invites you in and it feels really good. And then finally, like in terms of perks, you know, we always, benefits, we always think of like those, those benefits like medical and 401k and all that. But then perks, you've got this lady sharing that her favorite one is the free book program where if the book's not in the lending library that they have, they'll just buy it for you and then add it to the library. So you end up with people wanting to learn more and investing in learning and the company just supports that investment. And that's it's one of those out, outside of the box things that's really cool. It's a really cool idea. And it really doesn't cost a lot of money. No, not at all. Speaking. 
So that way, what we've done is we've looked at in those two companies, we looked at evaluating your online presence. So looking at your, basically your careers page, your website, your, um, all the social and the uh, glass door, and then looking at the processes for applying and seeing, are there any, any processes that are really, you know, we haven't updated them in years or um, they're redundant and they're annoying people and driving candidates away. And then look at your culture and how are you showcasing it? Are, are people able to see that on social media? Does it come across? Because we talk to a lot of places that have great culture, but nobody knows about it. And that's the real key to success now is show that in your employment brand. And this is something that we've been doing with, with companies because a lot of place, places don't know what an employment brand is or how to make one. Mm -hmm. And that's what this collaboration between Ed and I has resulted in is just creating employment brand stories. Started with doing Ed's and, um, and then as we started looking at his clientele, we, we saw that a lot of people need to get these great stories out to the people they're trying to hire. So evaluate your brand, your brand story, your employment brand story, go, go through these three, not necessarily steps, but these three, these three things that you can evaluate and compare it to those sites that we had. And that is how you improve your candidate experience. So final thing we, we'd like to ask you to do real quick is if you don't mind, get your phones out. Um, and zap this QR code and give us some feedback on today. And for doing that, remember I teased you that um, we would we would show you how to rewrite your job posts. Um, if you uh, give us some feedback, you're going to get a link to download our free guide on how to rewrite your job posts so that they, they answer the with them in there. So it should be real easy to take you... 30 seconds, um, I believe in keeping things simple. Uh, there's a couple of very easy questions uh, to let us know how we did today and how we can improve for the future. Uh, Krista says, we'll be providing the slideshow. Uh, yes, if you get us your email, Krista, happy to do that for you. And Larry's back to sheets. Fill up with our career gasoline and let's grow together. Yeah. <laughs> yep. <laughs> they're they're witty. Yeah. No, they it, notice, it, it notice how I put the Z in gasoline. <laughs> yep. Yeah. You, yep. <laughs> you got the got the lingo <laughs> down. Yeah, I pulled and, up Instagram while we were looking at that, and you're right. They they used that a lot. The S H and the Z lot. was was apparent on most of their posts with that. Yeah. Yeah. And, and they realized. They realize that people are making fun of their name and <laughs> making sheets happen and stuff like that. So that's right. Yeah, yeah. Um, and one thing about so the, this uh, this job posting, it it's actually too good. We're we're giving uh, giving secrets away in it. We're giving so. secrets away. Yes. <laughs> so hey, if you had a good time this month, uh, next month's topic is uh, the three job seeker expectations leaders have to address. So we're going to expand on some of the things that we talked about today, um, really diving into to more about what people are expecting from us um, in this whole process. Um, it's on May 8th, uh, 1 p.m. Eastern, uh, same bat station. Uh, it's a little bit different date. And so um, if you've attended this one, that means you're probably on our mail list and we'll get, a, get an alert to sign up for this in, in the coming weeks. But we like to tease this out just so you can put it on your calendar in the meantime and, and put a holder in there if this is a topic that is good for you. So I know we are just at two minutes after the hour. So thank you so much for indulging us for a couple of extra minutes. Um, we can hang out for a little bit. If uh, someone has uh, any questions that we didn't get to, we're happy to do that. But I also want to be respectful of your time. So if you have to hop, go ahead and hop. And I will say thank you and great to see you. But Paul and I will hang out for a minute if someone has a question for us.